Um, bring your horns. Feel free to submit your questions again in that Q&A format. You can ask questions in the comment section as well on the event page. So we're in the summer season. Um, well, it's in my part of the world, summer's still trying to come along. It's um, still pretty a, a bit drizzly and chilly and a lot of times jacket weather still. But nonetheless, we're on summer schedule. So for a lot of people, that means really inconsistent schedules. So it's, for some people, it's great. It means they've got a lot of open time that, you know, a lot of time that opened up um, that you can actually practice your trumpet, some, you know, things that we, uh, earlier before summer, maybe you were feeling you didn't have enough time. So especially students sometimes say, great, now I've got some practice. Um, other people, I know it's completely the opposite. Summer schedule is just hectic. Um, I actually have, um, have some openings in my schedule for live students. I'll talk more about that later on. But um, if you are looking for a little bit of help with some personal one-on-one -on -one instruction, we'll have the opportunity to uh, join me on Skype. Um, I'll, 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 I'll address and describe some of those uh, details of how that program works in a little bit. Um, nonetheless, and again, one more time, uh, looks like more and more people are coming in here. I will encourage you to ask questions via that Q&A app. And again, to get to that app, it, I might be wrong, but I think it's right up here in this corner that's a little, uh, a little uh, grid icon or maybe it looks like a Rubik's Cube. Click that one and you can ask your questions. So let's get under it, get into it. Um, practice. So a lot of times what I will hear from people and what I'll even see in my own students is we'll put in the time, we put in the hours, um, and yet we're not quite getting the results from that practice time that we could be getting for, that we could be getting or that we would like to be getting. Um, I think I just heard, oh, I know why. I'm just told that the icon is over here, the little grid icon, right? Thank you for that update. My, uh, my uh, video is mirrored, so opposite side. You know what, what I mean, though, hopefully, and that'll work. Um, so yeah, it's getting the most out of the practice. A lot of times people will come in, and I know that my own students sometimes will come in and they'll sit down in their practice and they're really good about keeping their schedule and their practice routine, but they'll play a little bit of this and then go, eh, and then turn the page and play a little of that and go, eh, is all right. And what happens is after a week, when I see them again next time, they sound a little bit more confident on a lot of the material that we've talked about, but only a little bit. Um, what I really like is, in fact, what happened with the student that I met with earlier today. He came in and he was kind of depressed and he said, Brett, I'm sorry, I really only practiced one thing out of the six items that you told me to practice. I really only practiced one, and even that one's not going very well. And just to make sure that it wasn't an excuse, I said, so to confirm, are you telling me that you practiced one thing, but you did it every single day? Yep. All right, great, let's hear it. And it was really, really good. So the progress that he had made from last week to this week, you know, went from here last week to here this week, right? That's the kind of process, progress that's gonna stick with him. And he gained so much more this week by really focusing on one project and developing it, as opposed to hitting this piece a little bit, this piece a little bit, and this one a little bit, and maybe raising his ability just eh, that much. So how do you do that? How do you really focus on one thing? Well, let me, before I put, put the, the buggy ahead of the, the horse, uh, we'll talk about frequency first. A lot of the questions that I get, especially from parents, is how often should we practice? How many times do we have to practice? Can, you know, is three times a week good enough? Do I have to practice every single day? Um, I had somebody come to me, they wanted to quit their trumpet teacher because he was insisting that they practice at least one hour every single day. And the parent was like, you know, he's only 11 years old. So what does it take? My personal belief is at a minimum, at a minimum to make progress, you have to practice at least three full practice sessions a week. And by full practice sessions, I mean at least 20 to 40 to 60 minutes. If you're just getting started, if you're a beginner, 60 minutes is a really long time. And that's a long time to sit in the practice room and especially, you know, let alone play full time. So if you're just getting started, ideally 20 minutes a day, at least three days a week, ideally five to seven days a week, five to seven days a week. That regular activity of buzzing and getting that, you know, lips against the mouthpiece, right? Time on the trumpet, just that time alone is really worth that. It's that regularity, I guess, that we're looking for. Really consistent, really consistent on that trumpet. Um, I have some students and they'll come back and they'll play for me and I can tell 
that they practiced some, but maybe not very much. Even without asking, I can tell how much they practiced because the people who are practicing on a really regular basis, they sound so good, right? Their tone is really nice um, versus students when I recognize that they did have good tone, but today their tone's really not quite sounding all that good. It's a little bit fuzzy and has an airy, airy quality to it. I say, you know, has it been a couple, three days since you practiced? Yeah, right? So try to get that consistency, first of all. Ideally, once you've, once you've got a little bit of experience under your belt, minimum five, day, five days a week, <clears throat> uh, ideally 30 to 45 minutes. If you can go an hour, great. Uh, one, one practice or habit that I really, really like is a good 20 minute warm up earlier in the day or first, and then at least a couple hours rest, and then a good 30, 40 minutes on more uh, the, the meat and potatoes of the practice. So that said, I recognize, like I said, this is summertime. Everybody has different schedules. We have different demands. If you can at least get a warm up, and by a warm up, I'm talking about five, 10 minutes minimum, uh, four days a week, that's good enough to sustain you. And then if you can throw another at least three practices on top of those warm ups, you're doing great. Um, all right, so content, that brings us to talk content. I've got my practice schedule set aside. What am I gonna do in that, in that time? Organization is key. If you, can, if you can decide in advance, ideally the week in advance, what am, I gonna, what am I gonna practice this week? What am I trying to gain this week? Or what skills am I trying to improve this week? Great, that's, we'll call that your long-term goal, even though a real long-term might be a year out. But let's say you have your weekly goals. Then when it comes time to your daily practice, before you even start, before you even come to your practice session, try to figure out what it is that you wanna to accomplish today. What do you wanna to accomplish today? So have that in mind before you even start playing and then be ready to adjust. What happens a lot of times, with, with me even, we'll come in and I say, okay, I know there's a piece that I wanna work on. It was going okay a couple, a couple of days ago and I really wanna raise my ability on that piece. And I'll come in, and I'll just, I wanna play a nice warm up, but it feels like, right, I'm not, I'm just not getting a good sound out of my trumpet and I'm like, what the heck? First thing, always blame the trumpet. Um, but if I'm not getting a good sound, that means I've really just gotta go back to the warm up, right? The rest of the stuff I've gotta put on hold because if I'm not even getting a good sound and my, and my range and my flexibility isn't there, I might as well, you know, go make pudding with lettuce or something. You know, it's it's useless just trying to force the the practice in something where you just don't have the basics, you know, the, the basic fundamental abilities right here to play it. And what I'm talking about is your daily warm up, right? I know normally I sound maybe a little bit airy, and if so, that's fine. That's my sound today. What I'm getting at that if you need to adjust. <clears throat> I'm talking about when you come to your practice session and things just don't feel right. It just doesn't feel normal. Spend a little bit extra time on your warm up. Um, so warm up. What does your warm up involve? I have a, a routine that I work with my students on, and they're playing the same general, at least exact warm up, if not the exact warm up, the same types of activities. But in the big picture, if you can think about the purpose of the war <clears throat> purpose of warming up, is to just get your embouchure and your tongue and your body used to playing the the notes that are in the range of what you want to practice that day so for example if i know that i'm going to be practicing something in the fairly high range for me today i'm going to practice i'm going to warm up into that high range so for those who are just getting started off the middle of your range might be about a g so if you can just start in the center of your range and then gradually increase both above and below that range that's going to be a pretty good warm-up for you and so this is a really basic warm up, but this is what I mean. So if I figure out the middle of my, of my range is a G, I'm gonna start playing just a long tone on a G. Hopefully I'm not gonna blow my microphone out. I'm trying to play soft here. So I'll play that a couple of times. That starts to feel good. Then I'm gonna start gradually going below and above. So hopefully that's gonna feel pretty good to you. I'm gonna start moving down. So I'm playing just a half note. I, I play a, a middle note and then a half note below 
half note above and then back to the middle note. So I started on G, I'm gonna move it down to an F sharp. I'm gonna rest in between each of these. My rule of thumb for how much to rest is I'm gonna judge by how much I played. So I'm gonna play the next one, again, going down a half step. I'm gonna play it back in my head. All right. So you get how that goes. I'm going to continually continue playing that pattern downward. And then I'm going to come back up to the G and start working the same thing up. So I started the G. I'm playing a little bit faster now, but now half step higher. and then rest for as long as I played. I'm gonna continue that progress, just continue that progression. If you feel start, start to feel fatigue from this, that's the message that you need to pull back a little bit, right? This is not trying to kill you, it's just the warm up. That being said, sometimes the warm up is your whole practice. So what I was, that example I was talking about just a second ago, during my warm up. Uh, when I come to practice and I'm just not feeling the way that I really wanted to, my whole practice might change from, you know, page 18 in my book to back to the basics, the warm up. Let's just get some things going. A couple of things I wanted to talk about because I know that um, we've got people who are uh, younger and I'm talking like middle school, late elementary school, and I know I've got some people that are retirement age. Those of you who are on the older end of that spectrum, I really believe that you are more susceptible to what athletes might term uh, call overtraining than the younger ones. So if you come to your practice and you just feel completely dead, right? Something's just not working. You don't feel strong enough. Try to think back. What did I do yesterday? What did I do the day before in practice? Did I work really hard? Did I practice extra long? Did I practice extra high? If the answer to those questions are yes, consider the fact that you might be just overtrain right these muscles the muscle fibers down in here just haven't had that time to recover yet so if that's the case do a nice slow warm-up some long tones really low don't worry about going higher long tones and those those slurs that i just demonstrated do it in the low register all the way down get loose and then pack it away for the day you're done if you are in that state of overtrained and and these muscles aren't responding because they haven't had the time to repair themselves then Again, the, the, any gains that you would make by spending an extra 20, 30, 40 minutes practicing material is gonna be just negligible. Now the younger people, because of the physiology of your bodies, you're miraculous, you can recover a lot faster. Generally, if things aren't going well in here, it's not because you worked too hard the other day. But the best way to avoid that altogether, regardless of your age, is consistency again, right? Practice the same day, the same time, the same amount of time every day that you possibly can. All right. Okay. So that's the warm up. Um, when you get uh, the next thing after the warm up is the developmental, right? The, the meat and potatoes. One thing that I like all my students to play every single time that they play is the flexibility skills or flexibility exercises. And what that means in, in my book, I equate flexibility exercises with lip slurs. And a lip slur is moving between two notes that share the same fingering. So the lowest lip slur. Um, on the, on, the, on, the, on the lowest end of the spectrum is a fifth. So from the first to the fifth note of the scale. So in the open position, those notes are C and G. Right? Ideally, you want those slurs to be as silky smooth as you possibly can. You want that tone if you could if you could slow motion that down play it back in slow motion you want to hear one pitch and then the next pitch 
and then back up and not that smear not the way you avoid that smear is really with your tongue first of all you want to make sure your embouchure is set of course and this is probably review for everybody that's on here tonight but the shape of the tongue is going to go e on the high note and ah uh, on the bottom note so di ya e ya and that's that tongue that's going to do most of the work in making that slur after you've got the first one you just follow the same pattern chromatically down start so f sharp to b That's the stuff that should happen every day. If that's easy for you, bring uh, bring your lip slurs into a triad. So, right, that's the triad. And again, you can repeat that same pattern on every valve combination. So, your practice at a minimum is going to include that warm up plus those lip slurs. If that's all you have time for, great. Right. Maybe it's 15 minutes, maybe it's 10 minutes, somewhere around there. Ideally, you're going to take a little bit of a break after that, maybe go grab a drink of water, come back, and then get the meat and potatoes of whatever it is that you wanted to practice on. Um, let me just check in real quick to the questions to see if there's one that I want to hit right away. Um, so Jody asks, how about somebody that's 63 and has only been playing for two years? So I'm not sure you probably asked that relative to something specific that I was talking about. Um, uh, and so please clarify if I'm, if I'm missing the boat on here. But uh, the, if, it's, if it's in terms of the scheduling of practice that we were talking about, it's exactly the same, right? Um, you've been playing for two years. Two years is fairly significant. It's, fair, it's a fairly significant amount of time, and you're probably fairly well established. Now, I don't know if those two years is, is consistent playing, consistent practice, and a routine, or if it's two years ago you started and you hit it you know, for a couple of weeks, and then you take a couple of weeks off, and then you come back, that type of thing. So, uh, But again, uh, I, I just have a sense I may be miss, <laughs> missing the specifics of the question, so please chime in and ask it again, Jody, if I'm, if I'm missing it. But the best thing you can do is just try to get that consistent schedule, right? Ideally, uh, same time every day, just like if you had a, a favorite TV program that you were going to tune into. Um, I wish I had a good example, but uh, I don't have one. Oh, American Ninja, uh, American Ninja Warriors. That's my new favorite one. I know that one's on every night, Sunday at uh, 8 o'clock, I think. So if I'm a really, uh, really passionate about that show, I know just every night that's what I'm going to do. Same thing with your trumpet practice. Just make a schedule of it, and it's much easier to, to stick to that schedule. Um, and Andrew says a lot of people travel at some point during the summer months. What's the best way? to practice uh, consistently during an extended road trip or vacation? All right, good question. And that's definitely uh, apropos to our time of year right now, right? We're on our vacations and um, hang on, and just getting a notice that I might have a connection issue. All right, hopefully we're still good. So hopefully everyone's still there and listening to me. Um, so yeah, during summer, you're going on vacation. The first question is, what well, can I take my trumpet? Uh, the last thing a lot of people want to do, especially if you have an expensive instrument, is to check it on the airlines. A lot of times that's not really a very good idea because you've seen the way they handle those bags and chuck them on the airlines. So don't subject your trumpet to that if you don't have it packed really, really well. Um, you can carry on your trumpet. It, there's no problem getting it through, uh, get it, getting it through um, security. They're going to look at it, of course. And, Maybe make you play happy birthday to prove that it's here or something like that. Anyway, you can take it with you. If, if you can take it with you and that's realistic, great. If you can't take it with you, you can always take just the mouthpiece. Just the mouthpiece alone, you can do all of those activities that we were talking about. Remember the, the long tones, the buzzing, that. <laughs> If you can do that kind of activity at least five minutes, just five minutes every day, you're going to be so far ahead of the game had you not even taken that mouthpiece with you. So at least get the buzzing in because when you come back, your embouchure is still going to be in, in shape. 
that's the part that you're going to lose the fastest if you just take time completely off. The fingerings, they can, you know, that's going to, that's a skill that's going to be a little bit more durable, right? Um, but the, the tone and the flexibility, and the flexibility is. <laughs> get a cleaner tone than that but you get the idea just some activity on the mouthpiece is going to be fantastic so when you're traveling for the summer months absolutely at a minimum take the mouthpiece if you're staying in hotels uh you can get a practice mute my practice mute looks something like this and it does a pretty good job of deadening the sound right um, that's soft enough that if you're staying in a hotel or if you're a guest in somebody's house, that's probably not going to bother them. Yamaha has a, a Yamaha has a system they call silent brass and it's a practice mute with headphones and it's really, really nice. It's fairly expensive compared to this practice mute. Um, it's been forever since I've bought this, but I would say that practice mute is 30 bucks, give or take. And that silent brass is probably, I don't know, 175, 200 give or take if somebody knows chime in there um, but either of those are great so if you can take your stuff pack along the, <clears throat> the mute otherwise um, at least the mouthpiece all right um, Shira says how long should you practice we just got done talking about that a little bit <clears throat> um, your goal for practice let's say it this way should be 40 minutes 30 to 45 minutes um, if you're just brand new and you're just getting started, that's a long time to commit to playing the trumpet. And, and physically, it's a long time uh, to be practicing. Part of it has to do with how you can pace yourself in your practice. If you can pace yourself so that you're not playing all the time, right? You're studying your music, you're listening back, you're, you're, you're not just playing straight for, for all this time. You will last a lot longer. So I encourage that. But ideally, 30, 45 minutes. If you're brand new, 20 minutes a day. Right, 20 minutes should be great. Um, um, Deborah says, I've been playing consistently a couple of years. I'm older, and this is the first musical instrument I've ever played. My issues are the breath, wondering how to use breath approach. Um, you know what? Let me come back to that question in just a little bit. Um, We'll come back to that one in just a little bit. I want to talk about a little bit more about the content of your practice. So we're to the point we talked about where, again, reviewing. You've organized what, you pra what you're going to practice. You've scheduled it. You're there. You've got your trumpet in hand. And you've decided in advance before you even start playing what it is that's your goal for today's practice session. Uh, Andrew says 160 for the silent brass. So cool. Sorry for the interruption. I get distracted easily. Uh, okay, so you know what you're going to practice and you get into it. Once you start playing, you need to listen carefully, right? Know what you're getting, the feedback. Um, in, uh, in basketball, if you're shooting free throws, your feedback is automatic. You know if you made the shot or not. You don't necessar necessarily know what your form was like, but you know how you did it. In music, it's not quite the same, but it's similar, right? You do know if you missed a note most of the time. You know if you missed a note. You don't necessarily know if you're getting full breath support. You don't necessarily hear well enough, surprisingly. You don't necessarily know if you're in tune or out of tune a little bit. So um, we'll, we'll talk about first things first. Most people just want to get through a piece of music. Um, and most people, they're going to open up their, their music and they're going to start. Let me, I have uh, something that I can do a little screencast with and maybe share with you to make sense. And this may not be the greatest quality, but hopefully this will make sense to you. So let's say this is the piece that I want to practice. Most people are going to start here at the beginning and they're going to play it to the end. And they say, okay, well, I made a lot of mistakes. I need practice. So let me start back at the beginning, play it again, back to the end. Fine. All right. But let's say you get to this and I don't know where any of you are, but some of you might be to the spot where you say, wow, that's a lot of 16th notes, man, that's a lot of black ink on this page. And I'm not sure I can do this. Um, I'm scared of it. I don't even want to try it. First things first, check out the, the musical notation. Um, the hints that you have, this one says Allegretto. That's a tempo marking but right here. 
it says, you probably can't read that, uh, but it says 72 beats per minute, right? Quarter note equals 72. I'm going to turn on my metronome. One, two, three, one, two, three, so at that tempo, those 16th notes aren't even all that bad. One, two, one E and a two, bum, 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 right? A little bit, uh, uh, not, not, as quite, not quite as unruly as you might first uh, think if you're not used to playing the 16th notes. But always remember that you can slow down something, slow something down. So for example, let's say you're playing and you start this off and it goes, and you go, wow, great. And you play through, and then you get to the section at A. And it starts sounding like. You say, oh, man, that stinks. So rather than playing that through the end, what I'd like you to do is just bracket this off and you're going to consider that much a practice unit. We're going to call it a practice unit. If you can define your practice units, you know where to spend your time on. And this is really the, the main lesson of what I wanted to get to today in terms of efficiency. Don't keep playing the, the same piece over and over from the beginning. If you know where the trouble spot is, hit the trouble spot. So for example, let's say I practiced this today and I worked on it. I did the best I can. I made my notes and then tomorrow, I come back. Well, it's been 24 hours since I looked at this. Where am I going to start? The beginning? No. I'm going to come right back here to the parts that I bracketed off. And I know that what I have to do is get this thing figured out. Even though I know that my tempo is 72, nothing says that I need to practice it at that. In fact, you should not because uh, the rule of neurophysiology says and behavior says that you will, uh, whatever you do is going to be reinforced. So if you continue to play this fast, and that's how it comes out, that's what you're reinforcing. The better way to do it is slow it down. Just play it as slow as you need to, even out of time, if it's, if it's tricky enough. So what I'm going to do is play those first notes. OK, great. I can play it at that tempo. I can play those notes just free time. Now I'm going to put it into time. One E and a two. Um. Okay, well, that sounds ridiculously slow, maybe for me. I could do that all day. If that's what you realize, fantastic. You're in a great spot because at that point, all you need to do is just start edging up that tempo a little bit. Okay, perfect. It's still way, way, way slow in theory, but I'm playing it right. So you're making the, the right neural connection between your brain and your fingers and your tongue, and you're doing it right. The only, the only thing that's not quite right is it's not quite fast enough. You will learn, though, so much faster practicing something this way than you will if you just con con continue to barrel through, uh, you know, bull in the china shop kind of, kind of approach. All right, does that make sense? Um, I'm going to stop. Hopefully everybody could see that. All right. Um, so this, the rest of it is that's, that's really what you're just going to do in your practice session. Ideally, you're going to continue that until you get it where you say, yeah, that's good. That's the best I can do. And try to keep in mind your point of reference, your, you know, your, your frame of reference. If you're listening to Wynton Marsalis playing something and you're trying to play the same piece, you are forever going to be saying, man, I can't play it as good as Wynton Marsalis, right? Let it be okay, right? Judge your progress by where you started, right? If you can continue to progress and makes things sound uh, reasonably well, that's great. Nobody expects you being a two or three or one year trumpet player to be able to play at the same level as, as a professional, okay? So be realistic, recognize your successes and celebrate that. Also recognize your weaknesses and then just very systematically, methodically chip away at those to bring your whole level of playing upwards a little bit. Does that make sense? All right. Um, so one more time, I'm repeating myself for those of you who joined me and joined in with me earlier. 
if you would like to chime in with a question, use that Q&A app. Um, it's, in, it's in the corner up here. There's a little grid icon. It looks a little bit like a Rubik's Cube. Click on that one, and you can ask a question. Uh, now, back to Deborah's question. Um, she was talking about uh, an issue being the breath support and wondering how, how to use the proper breath approach. Um, think about, this might be a bad example if you don't know how bagpipes work, but the bagpipe instrument, the, 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 the instrumentalist blows up the bag, right? It's not that makes the sound. It's these pipes coming out of the top of the bag. He has to inflate the bag, just blow, 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 blow to, to fill up this bag so he can squeeze it. When that bag's full, he's got right a lot of sound, and that's what makes it sound good. When that bag starts to get weak, the tone starts to come out and get a little bit weak as well. I've heard that especially as it starts, right? Um, but I love the question because I go back to this thing 90% of the time, when somebody I'm working with has an issue, 90% of the time, it's at least related to breath support. So what does that mean? It means you first of all have to start with good posture, right? Sitting in a, in a chair with either a solid back or better yet, no back, or better yet, standing up, right? We get it in the, the idea in the, in the routine of sitting down, I know a lot of us, and getting into that type of a posture, right? So first, posture. When you have an open chest, that means your lung or lungs are gonna be open and receptive to a full breath. Now, how do you take this full breath? People who practice yoga are really good at this. They're almost naturals. But what you wanna do is, is concentrate and, and have that sensation of filling up your breath way down here in your abdomen. If you, if you lie on your back, you can feel this. So tonight when you're lying in bed or even right now if you want to, lie down on the floor on your back Rest your hand right over your navel. And as you breathe in, you're gonna feel your hand rise and fall. So that's the sensation that you want. You wanna start your breath so that it's, it's open all the way down there. Um, and you, you've got a good full breath of air. Now that's not to say that you have to take a full big breath of air and then blast it out, right? Even if you're playing pianissimo, you still need that full breath of air. Um, sometimes that takes uh, takes a little bit of getting used to. Um, I heard um, I, I heard a trumpet player talking about uh, an exercise that he really likes, and I've tried it, and I do like it, but I don't stick with it because it makes me lightheaded. I wish I had something. He takes a, a, a length of PVC tubing like this, and just about an inch an, an inch long or so. It doesn't matter how long it is really, but about three quarters of an inch in diameter, and I'll put that in his mouth and just like that. What that does is it forces the tongue low and it forces the mouth open and you can get a lot of air in a quick amount of time. I'm probably beating this, this topic to death too much, but, um, but that's the idea, right? I love the question. The fact that you ask the question means you're on the right track. The breath really is that important. Take a big breath regardless of whether you're playing fortissimo or pianissimo on the other, other extreme. All right. Um, let me see if I can grab another question off here. Uh, back to Jody's question, uh, trying to give me a little bit of context of his last one. Um, he's talking about trying, uh, getting tired of just playing scales and have no idea where to go from here. Okay, so I think what you're saying is, what am I gonna practice, right? I've got my trumpet, maybe I know how to play a couple of scales, but I really don't know what else to practice, right? The best thing I can suggest is, um, if, if you've got somebody that you can work with in your area, fantastic. Um, whether that's a uh, you know legitimate uh, professional trumpet teacher, or even just other people you know, other musicians that you know, um, uh, method books are pretty easy to come by. Um, the one I use, a couple of them. Uh, one is called that I, that I like essential elements is a fairly common method that a lot of the schools use uh, The Rubank series is another one that I use with my students I think both of these are intermediate books that I pulled up. They have beginning books as well and advanced books So my best advice for you is run down to the music store um, Wherever you happen to be and just look for some of these method books try to stay away from the song books like um Oh, I don't know, show tunes or Disney or whatever they might be. They're not necessarily geared 
toward a progressive type of a, or, or a developmental type of progress. If you get some of these method books, it's going to start off with material that you will then build on both strength wise, endurance wise range as you work through the book. So if you're not working with a, with a teacher or anything like that, try one of those, start working through the material early in the book and progress through it. And I will encourage you to not try to try to not jump too far ahead because if you find something relatively early in that book that you can't do, that's a really good indicator that that's something that is a good spot for you to, to, to work on. You're going to gain a lot by working your way through that and getting it right. Hope that makes sense. Um, Shira says, when I buzz, it's too low. How can I fix it? Okay, so I think what you're what you mean is as opposed to this, um, and then I play with my mouthpiece. Same note. And then with my mouth I go, right? The pitch drops. Part of this is just learning and it's and it's regular, consistent practice. So if the best kind of buzz that you can make is and that you can't control that pitch, I'm going to encourage you to roll the, first of all, roll the lips in a little bit just to make this a little bit tighter. So make sure that you've got really firm corners here in the edges. And not pinched here in the center, but, but stable, I guess, is a better word. So rolled in enough so that you can get that buzz. A good starting point is find any pitch that you can sustain, you know, that you can really control, not right, but if that's where you can start and sustain it, beauty. After that, once you can do that, then start wavering it a little bit. Now, that's your first steps of control. So start with that. And I think you can see where I'm going with that. Continue to develop that higher and lower. And once you get that underway, you're going to be a lot better and have a lot more control over your buzz. Let me make one other clarification here. Um, I don't want to imply that you have to be able to buzz to play the trumpet. A lot of people really struggle with that buzzing thing. And they say, oh, I'm never going to get it. I must be doing something crazy wrong. I don't think that it's necessarily doing something crazy wrong because I've, I've known people that can play trumpet really well and they just are not very good at buzzing. Most people, if you can play, if you can buzz well, you can play the trumpet well. But in, in reality, you're not doing that into the trumpet. You're really doing, right? You're not buzzing, you're blowing that air. By the time you add the resistance of the trumpet to that, it's gonna set those, that vibration in motion and that's what's gonna, gonna make your pitch. So the goal when you're playing is with an open sound, not a not a really pinched sound, if that makes sense. So uh, again, to hit that question again, uh, the best way to fix that is just consistent practice. And this is one thing that you can do if you're in the car. Um, just practice that buzz right when you're driving, when you're at the stoplights, um, especially if you're alone, so you don't attract too much attention. Um, but it's a really good act, good uh, driving drive time activity. All right, a um, couple of other questions. In fact, bear with me for one second. Let me just check the comments section and see if anyone had put something in there. Hmm. All right. Well, so. Some people, it looks like on the um, event site, there were several people that can't get in and I'm not sure why that is. What I will do though is this event should be recorded. So I know there's several people here, I can see that, and several people couldn't get in. So I will try to make sure that this uh, recording is available to uh, people who weren't able to make it here or couldn't access that. Um, couldn't access access that online session, so I'm not sure what these what that issue is. I'll try to figure it out, and if it's my fault, do better next time. But you know, uh, I'll probably blame Google first. No, it's it's probably me. I'll try to figure out what that was. So apologies for anybody that didn't make it. Um, a couple of other questions I want to make sure that I get to that were sent in. Um, 
Oh, the and I probably I probably will wrap it up with this because I don't want to stay too long. But the question is, where do you where do you put your tongue when you're tonguing? And and the tip of your tongue is actually going to go. People have personal preference, but general uh, rule rule on this: the tip of the tongue goes just underneath the underneath the bottom of your teeth on the back. This is a concept called anchor tonguing because the tip of your tongue is anchored to the gum right back in there. So that's your the tip of your tongue is stuck to the teeth back there, and then your tongue uh, you can still say ta 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 as I say that ta 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 ta. So the it's probably three quarters of the way of the toward the front of my tongue that's actually making um, contact with the roof of my mouth. But the tip, the very tip of my tongue, is still underneath my ta ta, just underneath the front teeth. So, that's where my tongue goes. Um, it, I used to not keep my tongue anchored there. It kind of would just be a ta ta, and it just sort of dropped to the bottom of my mouth or whatever. But I've tried to make a little bit more conscientious effort of keeping the tip of my tongue there right under my teeth and um, it, it by now has just become habit and that's consistent where I've where I've been able to, to keep a good tongue and, and get a good articulation sound from that. All right, um, so with that, um, I wanted to make one other announcement. Um, first of all, thank you for coming out tonight. Sorry for the glitches and for any of you who are seeing this after the fact and couldn't get in live, I'm, I apologize for that. And I'll see if I can figure out what it was that happened there and, and get that fixed. Um, any of one who is looking for some a little bit of extra attention on uh, on your trumpet playing over the summer, like I said, the summer is a strange kind of a schedule. For me, it opens up a little bit, so I have some extra time to bring in some some uh, other students. There's something here called Showcase. If you look in that little app. Um, in your toolbar called Showcase, I've put a link there to something on my website called Live Academy. In fact, um, if you go to the website etrumpetlessons.com slash live dash academy, etrumpetlessons.com slash live dash academy, you'll see uh, a way that you can sign up to work with me over the summer if you're so inclined. Uh, I do lessons over Skype, and so what that means is uh, when you sign up, you're going to have five sessions scheduled with me. Uh, we'll set a time that works for both of us. Um, and it's it's a little bit like a punch pass. So we've got five five sessions. We'll meet generally once a week for 30 minutes. So we'll schedule a time. We'll hook up on Skype. Um, if anybody of you, of you who are wincing going, really, you're going to be on Google Hangouts or something? No, no, it's Skype. I'm I'm a little bit smoother on that one. So in the mo for the most part, Skype works really well. All you need is a webcam and a microphone. A lot of times, that's they're both in the same device. We get online, and I'll just help you with some of the things that you're having issues with. No long-term commitments. Um, you only purchase five sessions. If you like how things are going, you can absolutely renew. The price doesn't increase. Uh, most of the students that I'm working with started off with one five-pack, and they just continue to renew and renew because they like things are going the way things are going, and they make their progress. So that's how that works. Um, nothing in the showcase tab. How about this? Okay, thank you, Andrew. Now you can see the showcase, the, the link in the showcase tab. Um, so that's the link to the Live Academy uh, page on my website. That's where you can sign up. If you sign up for that, again, you'll get a notification. Um, thank you, and then I'll be in touch and we can schedule, uh, schedule the session for that. Uh, that's all I'm gonna say on that. Because I'm not really, thank you, Andrew. Not really looking for a whole ton of people. Honestly, I could probably take only five more at the most. So, uh, if you're so inclined, absolutely feel free to to go there. And of course, I am available via the website, the contact page on the website. You can contact me on the Google Plus page. Speaking of contact information, you probably already know since this is already on Google, but it's. Uh, E uh, plus E trumpet lessons on Google plus Facebook is facebook.com slash E trumpet lessons. And uh, you can reach me at E trumpet lessons.com as well. Uh, Twitter as well. Twitter.com. It's at E trumpet lessons. 
Although if you're a big Twitter user, you probably won't see, see me being very active there. All right, so I think with that, I'm gonna wrap up. Thank you again so much for coming out tonight. Um, a little bit rough, like I said, stay tuned. Uh, if, you're, if you heard from me via the newsletter, great, watch that newsletter. Um, watch Google, watch Facebook. If you haven't already signed up on, uh, followed the e Trumpet Lessons page on Facebook, it's probably where I'm most active in terms of social media. And I think the next time we try this, hopefully within the next couple of weeks, we're gonna try the live, uh, the live uh, video stream on uh, Facebook, all right? So with that, I'm going to leave you. Best of luck with your trumpet practice. Hopefully you've picked up something tonight. And if, if nothing else, remember those practice units, right? When you're practicing your trumpet, figure out what is my practice unit? What's the smallest piece of music that I'm going to practice? What's the smallest skill that I'm going to practice and try to develop? And then within that practice session, hopefully you're going to finish your, your practice session noticeably better, you know, with noticeable gains from where you started. All right. Fantastic. Best of luck. Take care all.